بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد رسول الله. I begin with the name of Allah. All praise belongs to Allah. And may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad for he is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we've been talking about at-tawabi' case followers. We talked about the conjunction al-ma'tuf as well as the substitution al-badal. Now we're going to talk about another type of case follower and that is an-na'at, the adjective. This comes up a lot in the language. So, here is a very basic sentence at this point. Ja'a rajul. Rajulun, but we don't pronounce it because it's at the end of the sentence. Ja'a rajul. We should be familiar with the fact that this is a fa'il. A verb. Every single fa'il has a fa'il. Here is that fa'il. This is the action. This is the doer of the action. And in case you have some doubts whether this is truly the fa'il, it's a noun because it has tanween, and that double dhamma indicates that it's in the nominative case. And because it's in this case, this halatu rafa, this shows that it is the fa'il. That is the grammatical function that this word rajul is performing in this sentence. And what does this mean? This means a man arrived a man arrived any man not specific it's not specific because this is indefinite you can say any man but let's look at this next sentence what does this mean well, here, this is still a fa'il. This is still the verb. And this is still the fa'il, the one who is doing the verb. But here, there's another word that is clearly a noun because of that dunween. It's a noun, but it's also in the nominative case, halatul rafa. Now, we know that there's a sentence, a jumla fa'liya specifically, that has a fa'il and a fa'il. The noun that has the nominative case, halatul rafa, that is the fa'il. But now we have another noun that is also in the nominative case. This is sort of confusing. This is like when we looked at the conjunction, al ma'atuf, and the substitution, al badal. But this is not one of those. This is something else. What does this mean? This means a man arrived, just like we saw. But this word at the end is adding a little bit more information. A tall one arrived. A man, a tall one arrived. Or in more clear English, you can say a tall man arrived. What is this word tawil doing? Tawil, tall. It's adding a description to a man. So now we're not talking about any man. We're talking about a specific kind of man, a tall man. That is what this word tawil is doing in this sentence. It's not just any man because any man would be rajulun. Here it's rajulun tawilun, a tall man. A little bit more description of this man. So that is its function in the sentence. It's describing rajul. And because it's describing rajul, it takes the exact same hala, the same grammatical case. They're both in the nominative case. Halatul rafa. This word here, this has a particular name. It's called a na'at. Na'at. This is a ta at the end. Nun ain ta. And you can translate this as an adjective. This adjective is describing the noun that comes before it. This is the adjective is describing the noun that comes before it. And that's why they're both in the same case, the same hala. It's just giving more description about this noun here, the fa'al. So you have a fa'al and you have a na'at. That's adding more description about that 
fa'al, the doer of that verb. And because this is adding more description, you can actually put several words here to have different descriptions. For example, ja'a rajulun, a man arrived. What kind of a man? We can say qasirun. What does qasirun mean? It means short, as opposed to tall, a short man. Ja'a rajulun qasir, a short man arrived. This is qaf, sad, ya, ra, qasir. A short one. In this case, a short man. You can add another word, like for example, nahif, nahif. Nun, ha, ya, fa, nahifun. What does this mean? Ja'a rajulun nahif. A skinny man arrived. Nahif means skinny, slender. You can say the opposite of that. You can say Samin. Samin, Sin, Mim, Ya, Nun, means fat. The opposite of skinny. Ja'a rajulun Samin. A fat man arrived. It's not very polite, but it's Arabic nonetheless. Ja'a rajulun Samin. A fat man arrived. Or you can say Qawi. Qawi. Qaf, wow, ya with a shadda. This means strong. Ja'a rajulun qawi. A strong man arrived. Any man? No. A strong man. It's giving more description about who this man is. The opposite of that. Da'if. Da'if. Dod, ain, ya, fa. Which means weak. A weak one. Ja'a rajulun da'if. A weak man arrived. So regardless of what you're putting here, this na'at, this adjective, it can be all these different words. It's just adding more description to this word here, rajul. And so that's why it's in the same grammatical case, the same hala. And you'll notice all these words, they're on the fa'il pattern. Fa'il. This is a very common pattern for adjectives in the Arabic language. If you go back to our sarf lessons, our morphology lessons, we learned all the different patterns that exist in the Arabic language. This is a very common one and it's often used for adjectives. Qasir, nahif, samin, qawi, da'if. You can say fasih, which means eloquent. Fa, sad, ya, ha. You can keep going. There's many words like this. Qarib, close by. Qaf, ra, ya, ba. They're all on the fa'il pattern. And if you see a word that's on the fa'il pattern, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, it's going to be the na'at, the adjective in this sentence. So, ja'a rajulun nahif. A skinny man arrived. You can take this sentence and actually change it around into different formations. Remember, the noun can appear within three different grammatical cases, what we call the hala. There's halatur rafa, the nominative case, like ja'a rajulun tawil, a tall man arrived. This is the fa'il, this is the na'at that's giving more description about that fa'il. A man arrived. What kind of man? A tall one. A tall man arrived. Here, this is in the nasab case. Halatun nasab. You can call it the associative case. Ra'aytu rajulan. I saw a man. Double fatha means it's in the associative case. Halatun nasab, which means it's associated to the fa'il, but not performing the action. It's not the fa'il. It's something else. I saw. What did I see? A man. It's receiving the action. And here, Tawilan is in the same hala because it's describing Rajulan. I saw a man. What kind of a man? A tall man. Ra'itu Rajulan Tawila. That noon at the end of the sentence is not pronounced. Ra'itu Rajulan Tawila. I saw a tall man. 
And here, the last example, we have al-jar, which is halatul jar, the genitive case. Maradu bi rajulin tawil. Maradu bi rajulin tawil. Maradu, I passed. B means by. Rajulin, a man. But what kind of man did I pass by? Tawilin. Tawilin. A tall man. It's in the halatul jar because of the ba that comes before it. When you see B here, it's going to be followed by a noun, and that noun is going to be in the halatul jar, the genitive case. And then there's a na'at, an adjective that's added to describe that man. I pass by a man. What kind of a man? A tall one, a tall man. So what you're seeing here is that no matter what hala, what a grammatical case the noun goes into, this first one here, rajulin, 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 the na'at, the adjective that comes after it describing it is going to be in the same hala. Halatul rafa, halatul nasab, halatul jar. Nominative, associative, genitive case. So something to be mindful of. When an adjective is following a preceding noun, it takes the same hala, grammatical case. Again, these are tawabi' case followers. It's literally just following the case of the noun that comes before it. Now here's another interesting fact about this na'at, this adjective. If the preceding noun is indefinite or definite, then that adjective, the na'at, is indefinite or definite to match. So before we saw ja'a rajulun tawilun. In these examples, the alif lam is added, meaning the man. Ja'a rajul. Ja'a rajul. The man arrived. What kind of a man? At-tawil. At-tawil. The tall man arrived. That's what this means. The tall man arrived. As opposed to a tall man, the tall man. Much more specific. So if the preceding noun has an alif lam because it's the man, then the na'at, the adjective, has to take an alif lam as well. The tall one. Likewise here. رَأَيْتُ rajula. I saw the man. Alif lam, the man. But if you want to add more specificity, you want to talk about his description, you can say, الطويل. الطويل. I saw the tall man. And likewise down here, مَرَرْتُ rajul. I pass by the man. Alif lam. But I want to add more description. I pass by the tall man. If this noun has an alif lam, the, then the na'at, the adjective that comes after it, also has to have an alif lam. So in the previous examples, we saw that they match in hala. If this is halatul rafa, this is halatul rafa. Halatul nasab, halatul nasab, halatul jar, and with the kasra here, halatul jar with the kasra. But the adjective and the noun before it also have to match in being indefinite or definite. So, the tall man arrived. I saw the tall man. I passed by the tall man. So, here are some examples to drill this point home. Jabal ba'id. Jabal ba'id. Jabal means a mountain. A mountain. Ba'id means distant, far away, not close by. A mountain, distant, far away. Altogether, what you see here is a noun and then an adjective that's describing the noun. A mountain. What kind of a mountain? Any mountain? No. A far away mountain. A distant mountain. And so you can say, Jabalun ba'idun. Jabalun ba'idun. This is the na'at, the adjective describing this noun here. A distant mountain, a faraway mountain. Or you can say, for example, ala, and what happens here if you do that? Ala jabalun ba'idun. Because of the ala here, 
It's followed by a noun that's in the حَلَتُ الْجَارِ Genitive case. This is a na'at, an adjective to that noun, so it also has to be in the genitive case. عَلَى جَبَلٍ بَعِيدٍ On a faraway mountain. On a distant mountain. And we can keep modifying these words. We can say, for example, عَلَى الجبل. What happens here? على الجبل. على الجبل. Now what happens here? بعيد. It turns into البعيد to match. على الجبل البعيد. على الجبل البعيد. On the far mountain. You can say on the distant mountain. So what you're seeing is بعيد. It matches the noun that comes before it in the case, the hala, as well as if it's definite or indefinite. Whatever happens here has to happen here. Here's another phrase. Bab maftuh. Bab maftuh. Bab means a door, or it can mean a gate, depending on the context. A door, a gate. Maftuh means open. Maftuh is like maf'ul. This is another common pattern for adjectives in the Arabic language. We saw fa'il previously. Maf'ul is another common pattern for adjectives. So, bab maftuh, which means an open door. A door. Any door? No. An open door. A little bit more specific. So, we can do the exact same exercise here. Babun maftuhun, an open door. Or we can say, for example, fi bab maftuh. What's going to happen here? Fi babin maftuhin. If this turns into halatul uh, jar, the genitive case, noted by the double kasra, this has to enter the same case, the same hala. Fi babin maftuhin. In an open door. In an open door. Or we can make this definitive. That is to say, Al Bab, the door. Fil Bab. Fil Bab, in the door. We can add more description. Al Maftuh. Al Maftuh. في الباب المفتوح in the open door again this matches this this matches this so hopefully this is all clear at this point one final thing I want to say if the preceding noun is male or female the adjective follows that gender everything we've been seeing up to this point are male nouns. If the noun is female, the adjective has to be female as well. Qarya. Qarya. What does this mean? Maybe you don't know what it means. But you can tell that it is a noun because there's a tam al buta. And not only is it a noun, it's a feminine noun because the tam al buta is a sign of femininity in the Arabic language. It's a sign of a female. Whether it's literally a female, biologically, or just certain words are given female status in the Arabic language. This happens in Spanish. This happens in French, I believe. Arabic is one of those languages that they give female gender to certain things that are not actually biologically female. Qarya. What does Qarya mean? A village. A hamlet. A small town, essentially. Qarya. Ba'ida. This looks like Ba'id. Doesn't it? Far away. Distant. But it has an additional thing at the end of it. A temel buta. Why? Because it's describing a female thing. A female word. And so it has to match that femininity. Qarya is female. Ba'ida. Temel buta. To match that female noun. This means a far village, a far town. 
And so just like the other examples, we can play around with this. We can start adding things to change the grammatical case. We can say, for example, well, first of all, we can say a distant town, a distant village. Or we can say ila. Ila is one of those particles that makes the noun that comes after it in the genitive case. Haltuljar. So this would become Qoryatin. Qoryatin. Ila Qoryatin. To a village. But any village? No. Ba'idatin. Ba'idatin. Ila Qoryatin Ba'idatin. To a distant village. To a far village. And again, we can make this definite. How so? Alif Lam. Ilal Qoryati. Ilal Qoryati. But then, if we want to add Ba'ida at the end, Alif Lam again, Kasra. Ilal Qoryati al Ba'ida. To the distant village. Again, it matches whether it's indefinite or definite, it matches the grammatical case. And now, the adjective also matches the noun in terms of masculine, feminine, male, female. So a lot of rules associated with the na'at, the adjective in the Arabic language. Alhamdulillah. Last example for you. Interesting one. Madina munawwara. Madina munawwara. This is a noun because Zaman Buta. And it's female. So this means what? City. City. A place where people live. Munawwara. Munawwara means illuminated. Lit up. Lots of lights. Interesting formation here. If you went over the sort of lessons, the morphology lessons, you might recognize this. This is Mufa'al, Mufa'al, which is form two, Mufa'al. But because we're talking about something female, Tamil Buta, you have to add a Tamil Buta as well. Munawar means lit up, lots of lights. But we're talking about something female, Munawara. Medina Munawara, an illuminated city, a lit up city. So we can say Medina Tun Munawara Tun, Munawara Tun, a lit up city. We can say Fi, Fi Medina Tin, double kasra. And then this has to match Munawara Tin, Fi Medina Tin, Munawara Tin. In an illuminated city, a city that has a lot of light. Or we can add alif lam. Fil madinati. Fil madinati. This needs to match. Alif lam. Kasra at the end. Fil madinati al munawwara. Fil madinati al munawwara. And of course, this is referring to what? In the illuminated city, and what city is that? The city of Medina in Arabia, the city of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. al madinatul Munawwara, very common phrase. So what we're seeing here is that this na'at, this adjective, has to follow the noun before it, whether it's definite or indefinite, in the hala, the grammatical case, and also in the gender. Notice the Tamil Buta there. That is what we're talking about in this little section here. And so that is that. There are several types of Atzawaba, case followers. We talked about the conjunction a while ago, the substitution. And now we have the adjective, Anna'at, which is when you have a noun that describes a noun before it, it gives more description. Ja'a rajul, a man arrived. But what kind of a man? Ja'a rajulun tawil, a tall man arrived. That is what tawil here does. And as we said, it matches the same hala, the same grammatical case. 
So it matches in grammatical case. The hala. It also matches whether it's indefinite or definite. So if we add alif lam here, we have to add alif lam here. And it matches in gender, male or female. As we saw, there's certain words that are female in the Arabic language. This has to change to match it. So this would go from tawil to tawila. Or adding an alif lam at the beginning. Or dhamma. Or fatha. Or kasra. Whatever this first noun is doing, the na'at has to do the exact same thing. The adjective. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yam al-qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathira.